Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Sea of Thieves. If you enjoy this video, please hijack a cruise ship, taking all passengers hostage and persuade them to subscribe to me. Once they've all complied, simply sink the ship so they can never unsubscribe as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Pirates are pretty cool in my humble opinion. They sail the seas, they find treasure, they have peg legs. I mean sure, they occasionally make prisoners walk the plank, leaving them stranded in the middle of the ocean where they'll float for a while before eventually making peace with the fact that they'll soon fatigue and drown. But who hasn't drowned someone before? It's a victimless crime. Plus, Sea of Thieves has a really whimsical art style, so it's piracy, but it's charming piracy. Are you really even drowning someone when the world looks this vibrant? Meet my crew. We've got Stealtho Simo, Stealtho Mato, and Crosby7885, whose gamer tag looks like one of those randomly generated ones, but he actually chose it himself. His name's not even Crosby. This is our pirate ship, and it looks massive. I stood up on this cliff to get a good perspective because you'd be amazed how big you can make things look when you start manipulating the angles. We head to the tavern because there's a quest there where you have to find the mysterious Shroud Breaker treasure. I love cutscenes so much. Next thing I know, the boys are on fire and it just doesn't bode well for our maiden voyage that we're already burning alive. I'm now burning too, so I attempt to jump into the water below, but due to the parallax error, I hit the ground first. We couldn't be more ready. Life hack: Keep people in hanging cages at your home to help keep the floor space uncluttered. All right, so this is our guidebook and it will lead us to the mysterious Shroud Breaker. I'm not trying to flex, but this is also definitive proof that we can all now read at a fourth grade level. I eat a pineapple because it makes your jizz taste better, which is pretty weird given I'm about to head to sea with three other dudes, but hey, better safe than sorry. It's now time to set sail. Someone commented the other day saying I don't ever help the boys, so I take the initiative and put the sails down myself. I mostly do this because I thought it would be amusing to leave Marto on the docks fishing. This is like Home Alone, where the family forgets the boy, and he has a fun-filled adventure tricking those pesky burglars. Except I hope Marto actually gets mugged and murdered. We're flying now, and the seas are rough, just like my sex life. Just kidding, I'm all about lights off missionary position. Just kidding again, I'm all about sad faps in the shower. Well, at least I was, but I can't afford to pay my hot water bill. Well, actually, I don't even have a house or an apartment. I live on the streets and upload my videos from a public library computer. Well, at least I did, but I got banned from the library for showing students how to windmill. Just kidding, I'm a eunuch. The sun sets and we find some rubbish floating in the water. It's disgusting to see our beautiful oceans polluted like this. Do you know who I blame? Noah from Noah's Ark. The whole world flooded, so where did he put his rubbish? On the ark? After a couple of weeks, there'd be no room, so he obviously threw it all overboard. What a dick. I find a chest full of rare tea, and to celebrate, I enjoy a few beverages with the lads. Unfortunately, my character's a bit of a lightweight, and I get absolutely belted after only a couple. A hugely questionable decision, as danger is around every corner. On the positive side, I can now throw up on Crosby, which in some cultures is quite sensual, but also worrying as he is the only person in our group of friends under 18. I'm throwing up on a child. I'm now five minutes sober and can't wait to put it all over social media to farm some easy likes. Suddenly, some wannabe Long John Silver Malakas think about rolling up on us, but they retreat at the sight. Wow, they're out here making Villeroy de Joyeuse look brave. That was a French admiral who infamously retreated in the 1700s. I read this historical naval war book the other week and have been milking it for YouTube content, stonks. The important thing is we've reached our destination, a cluster of small islands where we should find a shipwreck. It all goes pretty well, right up until Crosby is eaten by sharks, the poor lad. Fortunately, I sacrificed my high school education to master the art of the sniper rifle and I proceed to wreck the long-bodied marine fish. We, however, don't find what we were looking for and so we set sail, once again leaving poor Marto behind. Poor guy, as these are shark-infested waters. The game lets you teleport back to the ship after a while, which sucks. I wish you could just leave your friends marooned on an island. That would be gameplay. Call it karma, but the seas are now incredibly rough. Our mast even breaks, which brings back some feelings from when my heart broke the first time I told my childhood crush I loved her. She was all like, you're my son's best friend and you're 11, how do you even know what Bakaki is? The one that got away. Things can't really get worse for us, and then I'm struck by lightning. This is just not our day. 
Unfortunately, I saved Marto from burning alive, and if I hadn't been there, he would have clearly died. If you want to call me an angel, I'm not going to stop you. The storm clears up, and a giant fish now wants to eat us, which is ridiculous. Not sure why I'm using a telescope to observe it, it's literally right next to our ship. Like the fools who tried to roll up on us earlier, it leaves, but it's because we've arrived at the same goddamn archipelago we were just at not 15 minutes ago. I don't know who's navigating this ship, like genuinely I have no idea, but it definitely isn't me. So here we are yet again, and I don't know how we missed it the first time, but there's clearly a pretty enormous shipwreck right here. Marto finds the ship's log, which we can use to retrace its path and find ourselves the elusive Shroud Breaker. We figure out where we need to go using deductive reasoning and set sail. We're also pretty bad pirates as the ship is in simply awful condition. There's just holes everywhere so I patch them up, but I'm throwing up constantly. I guess I suffer from seasickness which just adds to the whole terrible pirate persona. We arrive and we should find a chest here, but the island is swarming with skeletons. I'm enjoying this lifestyle though I must say. Let's be honest, if you've never fantasized about a woman with a peg leg spanking your ass with the blunt side of a cutlass while whispering sea chanties into your ear, I mean exploring the seven seas with your crewmates, you're lying to yourself. Crosby finds the chest we need, but we've also found this rowboat, and if this isn't wholesome, I don't know what is. A bunch of bros playing music on a tiny boat, you love to see it. The way Stealth Simo delicately bangs the drums is one of the most magnificent things I've ever witnessed. We paddle over to a shipwreck, which isn't part of the quest, but it would be rude not to make a bit of extra money on the side. It's super disorientating swimming around under here, but we find all sorts of treasure and riches. And Crosby even finds an explosive barrel, which he keeps lighting and unlighting to mess with me. So I swipe it. And this was a hugely questionable decision, as I not only kill us both, I also sink the rowboat. We're now stuck on the ferry of the damned for a while, and you can tell Crosby is mad because he's not moving. The lads even make me walk the plank, which is harsh but fair, and I have to fight a shark. You make one mistake, and suddenly it's Lord of the Flies, you think you know people. At last we arrive where the Shroud Breaker should be, and I decide to infiltrate the island in the most stylish possible way. I make the mistake of trusting Mato though, and he proceeds to fire me way over the island on purpose. First he bangs my girlfriend, destroying our relationship, and then pays for her lawyer so she can win the legal dispute and keep all of our financial assets, and now this. I'm starting to feel like I can't trust this guy. At last we're at the final destination, and I'm still throwing up. At this point I think I'm just throwing up to stay skinny, which is pretty horrible, but a great way to stay beautiful. We're attacked by two low level skeletons, and defeat them using several bombs, which is definitely overkill, but you know what they say. Bomb them until oil prices come down. It starts to go full Indiana Jones as we explore the exotic temple. We light a tombstone up, and the doors close. The area begins filling up with water, which is on brand for me, but still not ideal. We do some problem solving, which reminds me of this IQ test I took a couple of years ago. I had to answer this analogy question, but it was so difficult that I stood up, smacked the guy sitting next to me across the back of the head, and said that I refused to do the test. I guess I expected the supervisor to clap and say that that was the test, but no, I was immediately arrested for aggravated assault. We complete the puzzle, and there she is, the Shroud Breaker. As we leave, scores of high-level skeletons ambush us. I panic, proceeding to run the long way around the island back to the ship. Not my finest play, but this is a highly stressful situation. I don't take ambushes lightly, so I drop off the shroud and destroy as many of these skinny malakas as I can. This reminds me of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Great movies, especially the first one. I would definitely smash Kira Knightley, and I'm sure she's watching this video right now, and I'm sure that just made her day. Amato yoinks me right back onto the ship, which is kind of rude as I was in the middle of something. We sail all the way back to the island and sell the treasures, making absolute bank. We then return the shroud, and this guy talks for another 45 minutes. A simple, you're welcome, would have sufficed, but thanks big fella. I spend my riches, making myself look like a gladiator, which completely ruins the whole vibe, but then Simo says that we've been attacked. It's some scurvy dogs in a sloop, and they've rolled up on us when we weren't paying attention. When we raided that shipwreck, we stole some special chest, and it shows other players where we are. They sink the big mama, and because I've been so busy quickscoping sharks all day, I've got no bullets to fire back. Simo makes a brave run with the chest as they close in on him. We get separated, and all I can hear is him dying through the microphone. It's brutal stuff. 
I decide to go for the biggest finesse of 2020 and sneak aboard their ship. Under their cabin, I find an ancient chest, which I grab so at least we don't leave this encounter empty-handed. This is what being a pirate is all about. It's not always about fairness or winning and losing. Sometimes you've got to look outside the box as they sail away. I must say, I'm pretty impressed with my efforts. We excitedly open the chest and there's absolutely nothing inside. Wow, this could be metaphorical. I guess the lesson here is that life's depressing and high level players can go KYS. But thanks for all the love on both this channel and my second channel, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.